Hello everyone and welcome! There have been requests for a Bash and DCL command comparison video, so we decided to make one with the most basic and common commands first. Feel free to use the timestamps we've put in the description below to go directly to the command you're interested in. Also, in OpenDMS you can abbreviate commands to four and sometimes even fewer characters, and this quickly becomes a habit that is extremely hard to break. So if you see me using a different command from the one I'm talking about, that must be the abbreviation. One last thing, here I'm using bash on Ubuntu, which I may be referring to as bash or Linux, forgive me if I'm not always accurate. The idea is to demonstrate ways to do a certain set of things with DCL and bash, which is more or less the same on different implementations of various Unix systems. The first command on our list is pwd, print working directory. It's pretty straightforward and there is an exact equivalent on VMS, show default. You can see that the only thing different about the output is the directory specification format that is naturally different between the shells. If you can print working directory, you can also change directory. That is what the cd command is for. And again, DCL has an equivalent for that, which is set default. The next one up is the ls command, which displays the directory listing. This command, just like its VMS equivalent directory, doesn't do much more than just display the names of files in your current working directory. However, you can use keys such as minus L to display more information about the files. This particular key causes the file protection string, number of links, owner, group, modification date and name to be displayed which is referred to as the long listing format. In DCL, there is no direct equivalent to that that would include the same number of columns. Instead, you can specify the qualifiers for each column that you need, including security settings, owner, a variety of dates, creation, modification, backup, and more. Here I tried to replicate the functionality of a less minus L. The only thing that's missing is the number of links. There is no qualifier for this, but you can find this information in the directory slash full display, which is all of the file's metadata. Note that hard links are not available on ODS2 structured disks, such as the one I'm using right now, so the link count is always one here. But if I display the metadata for a file on ODS5, the link count is correct. Moving on, the next one up is the mkdir command that can be used to create directories. I'm creating the test directory on my Linux box and immediately deleting it with rmdir. On OpenDMS, directories are treated as files and the commands to create and delete them are almost the same as for files. You can create a directory with create slash directory and you can delete it by deleting the directory file, which always has the name of your directory, the extension of dir and the version of one. Now let's look at the differences in directory path specifications on Linux and OpenDMS. First, we will navigate to the newly created directories that I've just deleted. Okay. On Linux, to go to the directory underneath your current default directory, you can use cd followed by simply the directory name. On OpenDMS, you need to use set default, square bracket period directory name square bracket. The default specification will be appended to the one specified. Why period in front of the name? That's the equivalent of the bash's lack of slash. In bash, the difference between slash and no slash in front of the directory name is that in the first case you are referring to a top-level directory in your file system and in the second case you are referring to a directory underneath your current default directory. In OpenDNS, it's vice versa. If there is a period, the new specification is appended to the current default specification, and if there is no period, it is assumed that that is a top-level directory. The fundamental difference between how file systems work in Linux and OpenDMS is that in Linux, you have a single file system and mount points, and in OpenDMS, you have a separate file system on each volume. And so the default specification has fields for the volume and for the directory path that can be updated independently. The directory part of the specification always comes in square brackets, and the disk part does not, but it must end with a colon, 
So if you try set default followed by a random word and a colon, OpenVMS will assume that that word is a volume name. To move up the directory tree in Linux, you can use two periods. In OpenVMS, the equivalent of that would be square bracket hyphen square bracket. To move sideways to a directory on the same level as your current default directory, use two periods, right slash directory name in Linux, or square bracket hyphen period directory name square bracket on OpenVMS. Finally, to get back to our home on Linux, you can use cd tilde. In OpenVMS, there is a dedicated logical name for your home directory, sys$login, so the command is set default sys$login. Logical names are a unique feature of OpenVMS that allows you to manage file and directory paths in a very flexible way. To demonstrate the use of the mv command, I will move test.txt to the test directory. There, the file is gone and can now be found in the test directory. DCL does not have a dedicated move command, but the rename command works just as well. Essentially, what you do when you move a file is change its specification. The next one up is the cat command, used to display the contents of a file. You can also use head and tail to display the first and last 10 lines respectively. To display the contents of a file in VMS, you can use the type command. You can trim the display to the last few lines of the file by adding slash tail equals the number of lines you want to display, three in my case. As for head, there is no direct way to display a few first lines, but you can do type slash page, which will display the first page of the file, which is about 20 lines or so. The du command in Linux displays the amount of disk space used up by the current working directory. In OpenVMS, you can display the total amount of disk space occupied by a directory with the directory slash size command. If you want it to take into account all directories underneath the current directory, just use the recursive wildcard, three periods in square brackets. If you don't want to see any directories but just the number, you can use slash grand underscore total. Moving on to displaying differences between two files. This is one of the two bash commands in this tutorial that is completely homonymous to the DCL command. It's diff. The output is a little different, but the results are very similar. Let's talk a little bit about file security. I'm displaying security settings for files right now. Linux has three security groups, user, group, and others. OpenVMS has four security groups, system, which is a few groups of special users such as the system manager, owner, similar to user in Linux, group, and world, which is similar to others. The access options for files in Linux are read, write, and execute, and on VMS we have read, write, execute, and delete. There is also control access, but it's never granted explicitly, so it does not appear in the security mask. chmod is used to change protection settings on a file in Linux. I will restrict others' access to the file by removing read and write access, so that only user and group have access to that file. On VMS, protection settings can be changed using set security slash protection. You need the slash protection qualifier because there are a few things you can change about the file's security, like for instance its access control list. Since all access for others is already taken away there, let me take away all group access by specifying the letter G in my mask with no access options. Anything unspecified is left unchanged, and you can see that the security settings for this file have been changed. In Linux, you can change the group that the file belongs to by using the chgrp command. In OpenVMS, groups work a little differently. Files don't belong to groups. I won't go into detail in this video. I will just say that there is no equivalent for chgrp in VMS and that the group that appears when you display the owner of a file is the group of the owner, not the file. The owner of a file can be changed both in Linux and VMS. In Linux, you can do that with a chown command, in VMS with setSecurity owner. 
Both commands require privileges. In Linux, that's your root access. In OpenVMS, that's sysprev or grpprev, depending on whether the new owner is in the same group as the previous one or not. I'm currently working under a privileged account with all privileges authorized. But that does not normally happen on production systems. The grub command in Linux is used to search files for a string. You can do the same in OpenDMS using the search command. Mind that the order of parameters is different. Remember the first command in this tutorial that was the same for bash and DCL? That was diff, which has differences in DCL, but diff works as well. Now it's time for the other similar command, it's sort. In both cases, it sorts the lines of the file. In VMS, you must specify where the output goes, the terminal in my case. The next one up is find, used to find files in the current directory. In OpenVMS, you use the directory command and give it the file name. The default directory is assumed. If you want to find a file that is not in the default directory, you can use the locate command. In OpenVMS, you still use the directory command, but you need to specify where to look. I'm looking through all of the files on a disk called DSA0. Linux also has a command that tells you where the executable is for a command, which. OpenDMS does not have an exact equivalent for that command, although there is a freeware tool called verb that tells you where a command comes from. Most executables for commands are stored in sysdollar system, but their names are not always straightforward. For example, directory runs directory.exe, but append runs copy.exe, and help runs vmshelp.exe. However, you usually want to know the executable location for custom commands, and those would be added either through the foreign commands mechanism or DCL dollar path. So you can try show symbol command or show logical DCL dollar path. In the first case, you will see the executable, and in the second case, you will see the directory or a few directories where it can be found. Moving on to the date command that, in Linux, displays the current date, time, and time zone. OpenDMS has a show time command that displays the date and time. And if you want to know the time zone set up with the server, you can look for the logical name with show logical asterisk time asterisk. It will be there. To display the name of the operating system, Linux uses uname. In OpenDMS, there is no command just for that but it is displayed as part of the show system output. The next one up is passwd, the command to change your password on Linux. DCL uses the set password command. The whoami command displays your account name. The DCL equivalent of that would be the show process command that also displays things like the terminal you are connected to, the node you're on, your group default directory and other information. The groups command displays the groups your user is in. Like I said before, when we discussed file security, groups are different in OpenVMS. Users can only belong to one group, which you can see in the output of the show process command. To view the groups for all users on the system, you need to use the authorized utility. You could also compare Unix groups to VMS identifiers. You can give your users as many identifiers as you want, and you can then use these identifiers to control access to objects, like files, using access control lists. Identifiers for your process can be viewed with show process slash full. And to find out if a file is available to holders of a certain identifier, you need to do a show security on that file. Managing groups, users, and identifiers in OpenVMS is handled by the authorized utility. All right, I decided against going into detail about pipes, processes, file security, logical names, or users in this video, or it would get too long. If you would like to hear about any of these or any particular Unix commands or keys, or you have questions or suggestions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below and we'll try to respond in the next videos. Thank you for watching and bye.